Hey guys, welcome back to the channel, and I hope you're all having a really awesome day. Today's video is a quick tutorial for you guys on how I draw and paint the fantasy and fairy eyes that I incorporate into my current style of art. And I know I've done this tutorial before on the channel. This one is going to be a bit different though, since I am incorporating a full color way of doing it. <laughs> and I'm just doing it in an overall, I think, better and less cringy way. And um, I'm going to try to explain all of the steps in a more simple way. And as you can see right now, I am including a material list. Again, not all of it's needed. You can totally find ways around using the supplies I used, but this is just what I used. And of course, this is just my style of drawing eyes and there are plenty of others and this is not just the one way. But I do hope it helps you and maybe you can incorporate it into your own style. Oh, and also really quickly, this is also how I color in all of my other mixed media illustrations. Of course, the process will change slightly depending on what you're coloring, whether it's like a face, like an entire face or a body or just the eye. Um, it will change a little bit, but this is generally how I color in all of my art that isn't like an oil or acrylic painting. So getting right into the tutorial, the first thing I always do with pretty much any mixed media art is I sketch the image out on a piece of mixed media paper. And this is 11 by 14 mixed media paper. The brand will be down in the description below. And I chose to sketch with a lilac colored watercolor pencil. And I always sketch with a watercolor pencil since that makes the lines vanish as I paint over them. And of course, you don't have to use a watercolor pencil. You could use a light colored pencil and just erase the lines or you can keep the lines and they might show through a little bit, but if that's what you want, that's totally, totally fine. But I chose to do a watercolor pencil again so the lines will go away. And since watercolors are very transparent, if you do keep your lines, they will show through just so you guys know. And the shape of the eye that I sketched is a slight almond shape almost. It's kind of like a lopsided teardrop and I will post a picture of the sketch I did on my tablet right now. That is the eye before I transferred it onto paper and um, the eye will change its shape depending on the ethnicity of the character you are drawing or let's say the expression the character has. So this eye is not really a surprised eye or an angry eye. It's kind of just like a regular eye that I chose to draw and it's also not a specific ethnicity. Okay, so the next thing I do when coloring the eyes and all of my other mixed media illustrations is I go in with a light watercolor wash. And basically what that is, is I dilute watercolors so they're very pastel and I just block in the shapes so that I can kind of get an idea of what the colors are going to look like on the piece. And I keep my eyes very cool colored usually, and I like to keep my skin very warm, especially the areas above and under the eye. I like to keep that very red and pink, while my eyes are very blue and purple and green. And that's just personal preference, you guys can do whatever you want. But again, I just do a light wash with watered down watercolors. And these are Winter Newton watercolors, by the way. And I do the entire piece just really quick. And this is what I would do if I was doing a big portrait or again, just like a small eye painting like this. Now, next I build the tones with the watercolors. And if I would be lining a piece, this is also about the time where I would put down my line work since I would not want to line after I brought out colored pencils since I don't want the wax from the pencils to interfere with the tip of the liner I was using. But since I am not lining these eyes, I just went in and continued to build more tones with my watercolors. Now, I also go in a little bit more and add a little bit more dimension. And I do this by establishing my lights and darks. And I do this a lot underneath the eye and under the upper lash line. And basically I'm just using darker colors to bring different parts of the eye forward and push other parts of the eye back. So for example, that little crease above the eye, I wanna make darker since it's receding into the face, while I wanna keep, let's say, the cheekbone and the white of the eye and the pupil light since they are kind of coming forward from the face. And if you guys didn't know, the actual whites of the eyes are not white. And when I was younger, I would make them completely stark white. And that does not look very realistic. Not that these eyes are really going to turn out that realistic, <laughs> but um, they are actually a mixture of like grays and pinks and that's usually what I use. So definitely shade those whites of the eyes so that when you add those glowing effects at the end and the white highlights, 
um, they'll look brighter and more magical. Now probably the lengthiest and one of the most important steps of this entire process is when I break out the mixed media part of this art. And I am using Prismacolor pencils and basically with my pencils I'm going to be kind of lining the artwork. Since I was going for a lineless look I still want to give a little bit of form. So I'm lining the artwork with colored pencils and then I'm continuing to color with my colored pencils. And I am just using circular strokes to shade my eye and the skin around my eye. And I usually start by pressing very lightly with my pencils to kind of, again, put in more colors, but then I end up using harder pressure when I want to blend everything together with, let's say, a white pencil or a light blue. And this part does take a little time, but be patient with it and enjoy the process. And if you guys have any questions for me about it, just ask them down below in the comment section and I will get to all the comments and help you guys with whatever you need help with. Or of course you can message me on Instagram and I will try to get back to you. And I'm always down to help you guys if you have any types of questions when it comes to your artwork or anything like that. Again, I'm just deepening the shadows and keeping the parts that I want light free of like pigment. <laughs> and I'm also building more form, adding maybe eyebrow hairs, just showing where I would want some lashes, and just kind of filling in the colors inside the pupil. And again, I used a lot of purples and blues and greens in my pupil, but you guys can do whatever, whatever you want. I also, well, okay, I'm calling it a pupil, but it's kind of just like the eyeball. I didn't really add a pupil specifically. I kind of kept it just milky and, I don't know, glossy looking. But this is also probably the time where you would be adding your pupil and your iris if you're going for a more realistic look. Now, the final touch of my eye process is adding in the highlights and the sparkly, glittery touches that I add. And basically, I highlight in several different places inside of the eye. I always add a round highlight in kind of like the upper corner of the eye, but then I also bring the highlight into the center and around the edge of the eye. And if you can use my eye as a reference photo, that's usually where I highlight. And then I also highlight the inner corners of the eyes, the cheekbones, and the brow bones in this painting in particular. And of course, if you need help with where to highlight, you can always watch like a makeup tutorial or look up reference photos online of different models if you need kind of like a place to start with how you're going to highlight your face. And then I also use a metallic paint pen and that brand will be in the description down below. And I use that to just add a couple last minute touches to the eyes, like again, adding some sparkle in the inner corners and center of the eye. I will add a quick clip of me kind of waving the picture back and forth so you can see how the silver kind of sparkles in different lighting. And I really hope this tutorial kind of helped you guys. Again, if you have any specific questions, please leave them down below and I will get to all of them. And I love you all so freaking much and I will see you all in a future video. Love you guys so much. Bye!